this is Camp X-Ray. And what I'll do is I'll get you over to the little bit of a high ground. After we finish up inside, you can shoot down on it a little bit. As we proceed through the camp, you're going to see that it has a kind of like an old American West look to it. Uh, almost like out of Nevada, 1865. Even some of the building structures are very, very worn at this point. So have methods changed with the different buildings? Methods? Uh -huh. You mean the yeah. methods or stuff? Well, you have to talk to uh, an intelligence guy about that. Yeah. I don't really know much about that. To the right is where they've been to be canies up. Uh, negative. Platoon room. We gotta go to the next hut over. Uh, everything is nailed down, like on a ship. Tanny would sit here, and he, if they wanted to, they could try to flip the table so the table is nailed down. Carrigators would be over here, MPs back here, and the detainee would sit here, and they'd ask the questions from here. Not a lot to it. This is about it. Even the door handle, it was air conditioned though. This set of cell blocks is one of the newer ones, and when you come inside, you'll see that it has plumbing. Um, it's not very modern plumbing, somewhat still primitive, but it is a basic improvement over the original cells that we saw earlier. Um, again, one person uh, per cell. Um, this one here has actually got very little vegetation on it compared to some of the others. Uh, this is a, uh, a gravity-powered um, plumbing device. It's obviously, it's a toilet, except that it doesn't have any running water. Things were to uh, run downhill, the cells in the far left, are, the pipe is higher up than the ones on the right, and then it just drains off into a drain at the end of each block. It's not very fancy, it gets the job done, and it does not flush. That's the shower head. He'd wash up. It's not as private as some uh, Muslim men may prefer, but he gets the job done. A lot of uh, species in Cuba aren't as prevalent as they are here because this is like almost like a protected, sort of like a wildlife sanctuary. There's no hunting here or anything like that. There are deer, but banana rats, which have been hunted pretty well over in Cuba, are thriving here um, as well. They know you uh, by face. You know, some of them give you uh, nicknames. I won't say them pet names, but they give you nicknames. Like uh, I myself, they've they've called me uh, Matthew. So they uh, will ask for me by name if I'm working, and you know they'll just they'll talk. They'll just talk about the weather, how the guard force was last night, the book that they're reading. I mean, uh, a lot of them tend to be like in Harry Potter as of lately. So. We are now in Camp 4. This is the communal living. This is for detainees who are compliant with the rules and are cooperative with interrogations for the most part. They live communally as a result of that. We're in an outdoor recreation area outside of their living space. This is communal style living. They're in an open bay area. There used to be 12 beds in here, but that was too cramped for them, so we only have a maximum of 10.
And as we pointed out in the other camps, the camp rules are posted in four different languages so that they all understand that it is a privilege to live here in Camp 4. Again, hi, uh, I'm Anthony Mendez. I'm the Joint Detention Group Command Sergeant Major. I've been here for about 29 months now, and uh, what I want to do is just give you just a little layout of the camp itself. Uh, first of all, you're currently inside of Camp 3. Um, the camps are named in the order they were built, okay? one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, camp 3 is known as the, the house, the non-compliant detainees. A bean hole is an opening in the cell that we use to pass the food through to them. It's a food tray. And it is also used, you see one up at the hands and one down at the feet. It is also used when we apply the restraints in order to transport them. So anytime that they leave their cell, going either out to recreation and shower, which I will show you after this, or taken to an appointment, they are restrained and two escorts take them to that appointment. These are, these are very comparable. It's six by eight by eight. And it's comparable to other cells in other facilities throughout the U.S. This would be the cell. Now, wait a second. This would not be a cell for non-compliant. My bad. You'll have to erase that part. <laughs> this is a cell for a non-compliant detainee. As you see, they would just be given the very basic issue items, which is their uniform, some toiletry articles, and flip-flops and towel. Again, the Quran is displayed in the same way. They are allowed to have their Quran. There's been um, um, some substantiated cases of abuse um, um, where, um, in one case over in Camp 4, a guard, instead of relieving himself, um, went behind one of the buildings and uh, the wind was blowing, he was uh, urinating and some of the urinate, urination came on at an event and it splashed on the detainee's um, Quran and uh, I mean those are the type of abuses but there's nothing, nothing's been physical, any type of physical, any type of torture abuses I've been here, I've been here 29 months. We also have four handicap cells, one on each wing. I'll show you those in just a minute. Uh, the only difference in a standard cell and a handicap cell is the sink and toilet, and this is the standard sink and toilet inside Camp 5. The items you see on the mattress, sir, are items consistent with a compliant detainee. We also have the arrow that points towards Mecca underneath each mattress. So no matter which cell the detainee's in, they know which way to face when praying. Uh, these are safety hooks. A detainee can hang a shirt or a towel, but they can't hang themselves. They break free under very little pressure. You just get a, a request for, uh, for interrogations because, of course, it's a ripple effect. The guards are the ones that have to escort the detainees from point A to point B and also provide the oversight and the observation for that. Though. But we get uh, day, uh, schedules daily. Uh, as far as who they want to see and at what time. This is an interrogation room inside Camp 5. There are different levels of interrogation rooms in Camp 5. There are uh, interrogation rooms similar to this one. There are interrogation rooms that just have uh, padded chairs in it. And there's also interrogation rooms that have couches. And depending on the rapport the interrogator has with the detainee determines which interrogation room the uh, interrogator wants. A uh, couple of features I'd like to point out is there's two sets of cameras. There's an MP camera that's affixed to this wall here. It's a uh, fixed mounted camera that cannot be manipulated and that's uh, monitored by our control. There's also a, a pan tilt zoom camera on this wall here. And also right behind you there's a duress button. If an uh, interrogator would feel threatened for whatever reason he could press the duress button. An audible alarm will sound in control and a red light flashes outside the cell. It's the, depending on the, the, the rapport level. I mean, we have some interrogators, and I, I, I'm guessing you're going to meet with them here real soon. They'll talk to you about some of their techniques and the way they do things. But uh, uh, we know that we've seen, uh, and of course, we see because obviously we observe what goes on in here. And uh, at times, you know, there might be um, Finding Nemo um, or Harry Potter type movies that they, they might show, just uh, depending on uh, what their techniques are for that day or 
wherever the client is for that day. 